putting in advertising that our guest was going to be Peter Navarro, former White House trade advisor. Great guy, a lot of fun to talk to, very plain spoken. But a funny thing happened on his way to Nashville to be on our show tonight. He got arrested and put in handcuffs and hauled off to the pokey. Now, this is interesting because what's the charge? Did he hit somebody, hurt somebody, kill somebody, assault somebody? Nope, none of that. Did he steal money? Nope, none of that. Here's what he did. He refused to hand over documents that Nancy Pelosi's sham committee demanded him to hand over. That was former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee, and he was none too pleased that his guest, Peter Navarro, was indisposed by way of DOJ. And speaking of the Department of Justice, with the 1-6 committee's announcements coming in just a few days, well, America's top prosecutors made a few shocking moves that pissed off Congress. Welcome into TYT's Overruled. I'm legal analyst Adrian Lawrence. As it concerns a 1-6 committee's investigation into the attack on the U.S. Capitol, DOJ is making moves. Let's talk about three charged and charged nots that just went down. First, former Trump White House advisor and economist Peter Navarro has been indicted on two counts of contempt of Congress. Yeah, Navarro's one of the guys who aggressively pushed the big lie after Trump lost the election. He also failed to turn over documents to Congress and to appear for testimony. Now, Navarro claims that he did not need to comply because former President Trump asserted executive privilege. You know, that argument that's been repeatedly rejected by court several times now? Well, DOJ didn't give Navarro that courtesy most wealthy white people receive, allowing the privilege to simply coordinate a surrender date. Yeah, this upset the septuagenarian who was released from custody on Friday after being snatched off a plane in D.C. and slapped into some handcuffs. Instead of coming to my door where I live, which, by the way, is right next to the FBI, instead of calling me and saying, hey, we need you down at court, We've got a warrant for you. I would have gladly come. What did they do? They intercepted me getting on the plane. And then they put me in handcuffs. They bring me here. They put me in leg irons. They stick me in a cell. By the way, just historical note, I was in John Hinckley's cell. They seem to think that that was like an important historical note. Okay? That's punitive. That, what they did to me today violated the Constitution. Last I checked the Constitution, law enforcement need not give you a heads up or an opportunity to turn yourself in before they execute an arrest warrant, Pete. You know, this man's entitlement, it is clearly glaring, as is his ignorance. Uh, as we know that Navarro, a PhD in economics, announced that he's going to be representing himself in court, which should not work well at all. But Navarro is the second Trump crony to be indicted for failing to cooperate with the 1-6 committee, as the first was Steve Bannon, and his trial is coming up this summer. Now on to two other Trumpers on DOJ's docket. Buried in the Friday night news dump, DOJ announced that it is not moving toward indicting Mark Meadows and Dan Shavino. Those are two Trumpers who defied subpoenas from Congress. DOJ said that based on the individual facts and circumstances of their alleged contempt, my office will not be initiating prosecution for criminal contempt as requested in the referrals against Messiars, Meadows, and Shavino. Like many, the 1-6 committee questioned DOJ's decision. It tweeted this. While today's indictment of Peter Navarro was the correct decision by the Justice Department, we find the decision to reward Mark Meadows and Dan Chirino for their continued attack on the rule of law puzzling. Mr. Meadows and Mr. Chirino unquestionably have relevant knowledge about President Trump's role in the efforts to overturn the 2020 election and the events of January 6th. We hope the Justice Department provides greater clarity on the matter. As the Select Committee has argued in district court, Mark Meadows' claim that he is entitled to absolute immunity is not correct or justified based on the Department of Justice Office of Legal Counsel memoranda. No one is above the law. What's Attorney General Garland doing by letting Meadows and Chavino off the hook? You know, I'd kind of suspect that maybe the two men have been cooperating with DOJ to a certain extent, and maybe their cooperation is more valuable than issuing misdemeanor indictments for not answering Congress's questions. But I also wouldn't put it past DOJ to have created this big public melee among the right wing by arresting Navarro in such a quote-unquote aggressive way, unless they were trying to kind of deflect from the fact that they weren't going to move forward with indictments against Meadows and Chavino. But I don't know. What are your thoughts? You let me know in the comments below. Hit that like and follow button. And thanks for watching.